Okay, I think we can start. Eh? Participants are still joining, but let me first wish you a very good morning, afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are logging from. Uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this fourth session of the Glossolan Soil Spectroscopy webinar. My name is Isabel Verbeck from the FAO's Global Soil Partnership Secretariat. So today we're going to Brazil. Huh? Which, uh, I, I, I wish we could all go there. So our speaker of today will present the effort and successes from Brazil in building a soil spectral library. Before starting, I would like to remind you that the session is organized in a webinar format in which participants cannot activate their audio and camera. The meeting is recorded and recording together with presentation will be uploaded on the Glossolan webpage. I encourage you to post questions to the speaker and his colleague that are here to support in the Q&A box, which will be moder moderated by my colleagues. In addition, you see also a chat box where participants are right now uh, writing some very nice message. And you can use this chat box for interacting between participants. For any technical issues, please write to me on the chat. I will be very happy to help. So before the presentation of today, I would like to first give the floor to my colleague Yi Peng, who will provide you with a bit of background on the Global Soil Partnership and the Glossolan. He will be also moderating this session. Yi, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, Isabel. Hello, everyone. My name is Yi Peng and from uh, Global Soil Partnership, FAO. In the next few minutes, I'm going to briefly introduce to you who are we and why we are organizing such webinar. We are Global Soil Partnership. Normally we call it TSP. TSP is established in 2012 to position soils in a global agenda through the collective actions. Our main objective is to promote sustainable soil management and improve soil governance to guarantee health and productive soils. All our activities are downscaled through seven regional partnerships, also supported by our partners. Our activities also running under the guidance of the Intergovernmental Panel Technical Panel on Soils, uh, we call ITPS. As you can see, we work with a wide range of topics. Uh, for more information of the GSP, you are very welcome to visit our website. Above of all these topics, we also have a different uh, networks. For example, Global Soil Laboratory Networks, we call Glossalon. Glossalon is established in 2017 to build and strengthen the capacity of a laboratory in soil analysis and to respond to the end, to the need for harmonizing soil analytical data. In 2017, Glossolon started to work on wet chemistry, focus on training, harmonization of uh, standard operating procedures, and uh, the execution of uh, inter-laboratory comparison. Last year, we launched the Glossolon Initiative on Soil Spectroscopy, also International Network on Fertilizer Analysis. For, these two, for more information on these two initiatives, you are also very, very welcome to visit the Glossolon website. As, as I mentioned previously, the, our main focus of the Glossolon initiative on soil spectroscopy is a national capacity building. So we plan to have some webinars to train the colleagues and the labs research institute around the world. And the, Probably some of you already joined the previous three sessions of the webinar. The first two sessions focus on giving a basic introduction about this technology. The, the third session giving a bit the future perspective of this technology also to address some future challenges. All of these uh, first three webinars re video recording are online available. So you are more than welcome to watch online, also share with this information with your colleagues and uh, friends. So after the, in the beginning of this year, I had some communication with the different countries. And one of the most, one of the most often asked the question was how to build a spectral library and how to use it. 
That is why the fourth and the fifth session we organized the webinar on the topics on the, of the soil spectral library, the experience from Brazil and France. The last webinar of this ser series will be talking about some, uh, something about the measurement. So the first uh, uh, talk about the soil spectral library will, uh, will be given by the professor De Mate from Brazil, University of Sao Paulo. The reason we invited Professor De Mate to give this webinar, one, re one main reason was that Professor De Mate was one of the first soil scientists that started research on the soil spectroscopy in our community. The second reason was Professor De Mate success spent the last 25 years successfully gathered all the institute stakeholders to build this joint effort of a Brazilian soil spectral library. As many of you probably already know, the main challenge to build a national soil database is to gather all the institute together. Because as you know, many of the country have more very similar situation, which is the same, the different institute under the same department or under the same ministry, even a different group under the same institute, they are collecting the data but they never share the data, never share the soil, share the information. That becomes the major barrier to build a national soil information system or database. So now we are going to listen the experience from Brazil, how Professor De Mate successfully also historically brought all the institution and the soil labs, including commercial labs together to build this joint effort. So, Professor Demate, now floor is yours. Please, you can share your screen. You have to unmute yourself. Okay. Are you seeing the screen? Yes. Okay, thank you for all. Thank you. I would like to thank uh, FAO and the Gloslam and all the team for this invitation. It's always a great pleasure to be on this position to, 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 to exchange uh, experience. So as requested, I'm going to talk about the Brazilian Soil Spectral Laboratory and our experience on that. So this, uh, this speech, this lecture is a, a, bit, a bit different from the other ones because I'm not going to stay so much on, on the statistical part. This was that, that other uh, uh, moment. So I'm gonna, I divide it in some topics. The first topic is a contextualization. And I would say that uh, I would invite everybody please to come and here like a history. It's a step-by-step -step history on how could we reach that, okay? So first of all, I would like to start showing about um, the science, science and food production. I will introduce you one of the main, main important pedologists of Brazil, that is Jose de Ma Luis de Mate. He's already retired, and it's one of the most important ones in Brazil. And during a lecture, he was talking about the challenge to feed the world, and that in the next 50 years, we will have to produce the similar volume from the last 8,000 years, for the next, the last 8,000 years. Now, the important thing here is that along his life, the base for productivity was to know soil types. And inside this complex, the main engine for him is mineralogy. Now, his great merit was to put pedology for soil management and food production and not pedology itself. So now we are on the next step. Our evol evolution is to make pedology for pedometrics and to put spectroscopy together to make, to go to food production. 
So what is happening in the world? It's a lot of pressure. And I'm talking firstly about Brazil. Regarding Brazil, the pressure to, to go against lands is very, it's, it's great. And we know that places that we don't know, to, we don't want to go to preserve such as Amazon because we have lands to do. But look at these numbers. Brazil has about 7% of the area already agriculture, but it's available more 11%. And we are the third largest ag agriculture exporter in the world. And the first on a lot of projects, but the numbers says that to sustain the world's needs, Brazil probably will have to produce 20% more after he has all the area used. So I can tell you how to do that without geotechnologies. We have to use this, we have to evolve. And on this matter comes soils. Soil analysis is the basic, basic information for everything you say about soil. Now, if an important point that we see on farmers mostly is that they are more, more, uh, um, they look more at the, the first layer, the surface layer. So they ask for mostly for nutrients, for fertilizers, but soils are, no, are not only that. Soils are deeper, it's complex. They have other things important to make the fertilizer act. So its dynamics needs texture, carbon, mineralogy again, and death to be understood. So soils, in fact, soil function as a complex organism. And how can I imagine it if uh, I don't know it. So this is the point. I have to know the soils to manage, manage it. Okay, so the, the third part is the consequence. This is the consequence when you don't know soils, degradation, false diagnostic, incorrect management. So why to still keep focus on fertilizer? Fertilizer, I'm saying that it's important, but I'm saying that something is missing. And going towards, yes, we have the solution on these soil analysis that are, um, that are the soil spectroscopy. But before that, let's look at some numbers of soil analysis. In Brazil, it's estimated about 6 million, 6 million soil samples per year, soil analysis and they are still growing. The world demand is about 600 million per year. So the question is, can we keep the demand with environmental quality? Will we have the natural resources for wet analysis? These are the questions that we have, have, can have to make looking at these numbers. So the solution is spectroscopy. Why? Because it's quick, easy, clean, and a method for soil analysis. And it has physical detection. It's strong scientific back background, but it has a little issue for the persons that do not know it. it I call it that it's an invisible information because you really cannot see it. You have to understand it. So you cannot see this one, but usually, the wet laboratories can't see what they are doing. So this is the issue. So how to explain to them that? Okay, so make it visible. Make it visible is what I call spectroscopy and basic field information. Yes, I had to make a lot of field information to show spectroscopy. Let's look at flow chart. So I started on aero photographs, what, what, well, this part I call the human learning, yeah? and then go to the boreholes to see the soils, and afterwards go to the pits and see what's happening in depth, and then come back to the relief and link all of this. This is starting pedology. 
Okay, but now comes the soil analysis. And when comes soil analysis, I don't stop. Then we go and see by feeling what's happening with soil analysis and what and I'm seeing at the field and if it's if it's if it's correlated. And afterwards, put everything together, and then I can start spectroscopy. And when I start spectroscopy, I can link what I see in spectroscopy with the field to see if it's coherent. And afterwards, of course, keep learning on the sensor, keep teaching, and you can go to remote sensing that is the never next level to link with the laboratory. That's why spectroscopy is good. You can go further. And now, after all this, I go to the field inside the pit to look at the depth and look at the roots and, and link the roots with productivity that is linked with pedology. And all of this, because of today's we have the machine learning system that put everything together and put also soil spectroscopy. And this machine learning, of course, will come out at the end for the human decision. So all this sequence gave the strength to say, to talk about spectroscopy. Now, now I'm going to part B that is the Brazilian experience on spectroscopy. The first idea and the first issue. Yes, the, the goal was to develop the Brazilian Soil Spectral Laboratory to show people with uh, the relation with soil properties. But despite the technique had strong uh, background, why it still remains in scientific field, I kept wondering why, where was the bottleneck? And I took a look at this picture here where our group always were working like researchers and trying to see where was the bottleneck. Well, in our experience, we saw that everything started on soil analysis in the wet laboratory and we kept doing the spectroscopy, but separated. Now, who really is linked with the field and with the farmers and the fertilizer guys and consultants is the wet laboratory. He has the confidence and researchers keep running around. And why? Why laboratories were like that? So in my opinion, we saw that the seed of everything was the wet laboratories. And why? The first document of them was on 1889, and they have about 131 years. How do you expect to take out this trust from everything that is on field? So we think that we had to merge the sensor with the wet and not trying to go we use the sensor directly to the farmers. Farmers won't buy it. We need to merge efforts with people that already have a lot of experience. So that's it. We prepared a three steps, three steps to reach society. Yeah, it took 25 years. And um, this is it. We started in 1995. We started, the idea was, we well, let's prepare to demonstrate this to people. It was demonstration for scientists, because still many of them did not believe. And then we will go to the teaching. We will teach it for persons, but this teaching has to be first for the wet laboratories and afterwards for the scientists that still were not uh, aware about it and then go to society. And the third step will prepare something for users to use and practice. And then final put everything together and then go to the next step that we will be on the real world. So these were the, our ideas. Now, how to convince scientists to participate from this Brazilian Soil Spectral Library? The first step, 
So the first thing was that we had to show what we did since 1993. I had to show everybody what we were doing. So we are here, I was still young and collecting soil samples and thinking, thinking how would be a laboratory. And we made at that time uh, uh, a spectral laboratory test and measurements and saw that it really could function. So I took this information and started to describe to the by bulletins, papers, lectures, mails, and started to spread all to everybody. And I also had to take this on speeches, but to spread the idea of the BSSL, I could not stay on only one community. I had to go to soil scientists, conservations events, soil management, physics, classification, mapping, digital soil mapping, plant and soil nutrition, precision agriculture, pedometrics, remote and proximal sensing, but not only that. I had to go and show the idea for farmers, extensionists, consultants, cooperatives, and public policies. So it was a lot of energy to go and keep showing to persons, keep showing for a lot of years. And I had still to, be, despite the key that was the lab laboratories, I had still two other key uh, topics. The first was the pathologists. They were the most critical ones on this. So I made an action. I invited a retired, awarded, respected pathologist to come in our group that was Igor Lepsch. And he stood on our team for one year, only looking at, and when he said it works and it's good, he started to also help to spread. And also I went to the scientific fertility community and said to them, look, I will promise a course to explain what it is. And also, the Brazilian Digital Soil Mapping Group by Maria de Lourdes gave a lot of support. So I, only, I was getting all the, the key persons to help on this task. So let's put to work. The first thing, make it simple. No contract, no institution participation, only the main researchers. Put the key persons to spread the idea around the country, and almost nobody had the equipment, so they didn't know about that. But we will make the spectral for them. And we said to them that they could send students to learn and to participate, so they got happy with that. So the key was trust to maintain the data. I will not give to nobody low cost, and you give, you gain, all gain. So everything was based on trust. And then I can show the BSL flow chart and its impact. Now let's start at how it, would, how it worked. So as you see here in Brazil, these black spots would be like the owners or the collaborators that, that wanted to participate. So they shared their soil samples and they delivered, every, everybody delivered to our university that were centralized. So we prepared everything. We took the spectra, we put all things together, we organized and, and afterwards we delivered only the, the spectra for, for the user, only, for, only his data. And he got happy because he didn't have an equipment and he could start to learn. And this was so good that he started to spread the information to others and today Brazil has a lot. So this is the first result on R2 for clay, 83%. And this was the impact on community. New groups were created and since we did not disclose the data, but we, we, we showed who had it, 
we encouraged the affected participation. We forced people to go to the another one to share and to talk. So external users can get the data. He can get in contact with them and they can exchange the data. This is the first step to get the trust. And more young students got in on board and pedologists as well. And the impact on all this is that we had about 40,000 40, samples, 41 institutions, 61 soil scientists participated from all over the 26 states of Brazil. Okay. So this was the Brazilian spectral shop we were prepared and we convinced scientists to do it. But these are, were not the regulators yet. So now it's the history of teaching for society because now I had something to show to them. Now for teaching, this is the history, how it initiated. Traditional labs have years of experience in domain of the users. So although society starts, although society starts pressured along use of residues, mostly for organic matter, which will be prohibited in Brazil, and this is for organic matter. So it's a lot of money, a lot of residue. So they are thinking, how am I going to do carbon? So this was the first trigger to say we have to find a new technology so spectroscopy it has already in place here but despite that we also had another trigger some companies inserted in the market sensors to make soil analysis but passing uh, over the wet soil laboratories so they said what what is happening here so the promise was to analyze, as you see here, all elements. So the community got shocked. Is wet laboratory community with 400 laboratories in Brazil, is it our end? What should I do? Farmers and research was also surprised, is this possible? So to normalize communication and say to them, the limitations, the advantages, and how it really works, we created the Brazilian program of soil analysis via spectroscopy. So this program, the idea was not to say that the sensor is wrong, but to say the advantages and limitations and how it works. And so we created the program, but we had the rule on the first course. The first course was to show how this near happens and only wet laboratories could participate. We had about 40 wet laboratories from 10 states of Brazil participating, only them. So they didn't do nothing about spectroscopy. And the, the program also has a lot of steps. On the second step, we started to show all sensors, but now other people started to come and see like scientists, ped pedologists, geographers, geologists. And on the third step, we put agriculture inside to put in practice. And on this stage, farmers, consultors, uh, mar people from marketing started to participate. So now the pro base is a community that talks since from soil analysis until image interpretation and agriculture. So this course uh, to put them, to make them come was not easy. Yes, I had, despite the trigger, I had to make everything by phone calls to I, I made uh, more than 800 phone calls to try to tell them to come. And as I told, we had 40, 40 laboratories and about six, about 60 people. 
but 40 laboratories from eight, 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 uh, eight states was already good. This is how it happens, this course. The laboratories, we gave them a protocol and they sent to us their soil samples to our lab. Now it's different from the, wet, from the spectral library. The labs send to us and we measured it and we prepared, we, we, we prepared by, by a laboratory. We measured with a lot of types of equipment and we made the predictions and processing. All of this was made by our group. Okay, so five months afterwards, because we have to make about 7,000 measurements, the laboratories came to our university presential and we gave the first course. We told them how it functions and we presented the data that we got with their soils. Okay. And what we presented to him, everybody had the results, but nobody had knew who was the laboratory. They received a number. So number one, he knew that was him, but he didn't know who was number two. And he, he could see, and this example is for Clay, he could see the R2 that, that he had for Clay uh, compared with the other laboratories. We also made a general model and the local model for each lab. So I'm only going to present for clay only for a demonstration. Now for clay, we had for the model variances here and the validation also some variances. These are were all pre preliminary ideas uh, we didn't make so much processing yet but we also measured the same samples and other uh, areas and we try I'm going to explain this we tried to show how how the poor here let's focus here the percentage of laboratories that reached more than 0 0.8 r2 for clay on training. 82% of the labs reached 82, uh, over 0.8, 82%. Organic matter was lower, but on the validation, it drops a little bit. So this is only to have an idea. We started to play with the data to see what was happening between the labs. Another conclusion was that local models were significantly better than general models. And the data were presented and the limitations and the advantages discussed. Okay, uh, these are the positions of the participants along Brazil. And uh, we are going now on the next one this year, we already have people from other countries. And this course, this course we already gave in Israel and probably will go now uh, to, to Russia. Okay, so continue the, the, the teaching, the impact on the, on the people that saw the course. Look at what happened. The community's first impact on the exposure of the sensor equipment launched on the national chain, as I said, when they got shocked, that would, re would replace laboratory analysis was now normalized. They got more comfortable. They do that a sensor is not magic. After the course, there was a complete demystification of magic spectroscopy and we are able to concentrate on real and documented data. They understood that spectroscopy is laboratory dependent. Now, they, but they know that it's, spectroscopy is good and it functions, but they only, they only want to see the limitations and how to do it. So now they are questioning all around 
how to make it because they are seeking for this for it they are questioning everybody what's happened uh, now how can i do this laboratory so we are on the questioning part and more the regional soil quality re regulators on wet soil laboratories are inserting now on in our their discipline spectroscopy okay so we pass through the teaching and now we go to the online service brazilian experience because now i can i can show them i can ask them to to start to use it so i'm going to show how we made this online it's a platform uh, you can see the platform on the chat so we have the background so the user will not see the background because it's not his interest on this phase. So here, all samples that came and have spectra will be inserted, but we also got people that sent a, on a same hole, on a same pit, they sent the soil classification. So we have soil attributes and soil classification so we can have more information. And on the front end, we will have the user that can choose on filtering the what he wants to see and what he wants to do, and I'm gonna show right now. So this is the structure. Okay, so how is, does it function? The online Brazilian soil spectral library, so here, when you go to the web, you see services, and you can choose three types of services. The first service, and I think it's important, you can locate the owners and who has the data, so you can get in contact with him. So you can get here on the website, and you can get the map of the collaborators, and you can see his name, email, and you can contact and say, look, let, let's exchange ideas. Let's, let's work together. And at this time, you can get the data. So the data are not completely uh, 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 closed. They are half opened. The next step on one or two years, this will be completely disclosed. But not, why not now? because first you need to practice, you need to learn, okay? Now, uh, the laboratory has VSNIR and MIR, you can choose, and you can choose to see a, a soil classification, how, how a ferro sol. You put ferro sol. Let me see the spectra of a ferro sol, and it will show all deaths from a ferro sol. It's an example. Or you can say, I want to see a sandy texture so, uh, spectra on mid IR. And you can see here the spectra. It's automatically, it shows on the screen. Or you can come here and, and choose the surface that the, 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 the service that you want to make soil analysis. And you can click and say everything you want. We put granulometry, chemistry, and remember, mineralogy. So you request, you of course, you will have to have a spectra. You will download the spectra. You will, the user download the spectra, upload the spectra, the spectra will go into the system online and you will receive in your email a sheet that is the soil analysis report. This is already functioning. You can do it right now. You can send a spectra and ask for the results and then you can compare with your real results and start to see how our model is functioning. More than that, we also prepared and we show the statistics to show the differences and accuracies between each 
element. Okay? So the sumer, and you know about that, if you cannot measure it, uh, you cannot manage it. Okay? All right. So going uh, forward now, what this teaching and what this thing it calls in the market, in, in the chain of markets, look at this now. What is happening on the same figure that I already showed, what I call the soil sensing cycle, because the data sensing is all going around, is that the wet laboratory that was separated from the sensors, now they are together. Now they are starting to come together. So wet laboratories plus sensors now are a team. And I can tell you, and this is my, my feeling, if we use the really strong basic of chemistry of wet laboratory, with the chemometrics from spectroscopy, we will have a greater result. Now, this is the team, and remember about the chain? Okay, but now look at what happens of the, of the chain. The researcher, when he goes around, he, he, now it's easier for him to say that sensors functions because he has the laboratory's trust. The, the fertilizer guy also, it's the same thing. And the farmer is the same thing. So we normalize everything at least at a private uh, level. And also the sellers of the sensors, it, be, it will be easier for him to come and talk with everybody because everybody now is understanding spectroscopy. So everybody, everything came from a seat. So important events from BSSL in 1993, and then learning, and here in Brazil in 2015, the first workshop on soil spectroscopy, and then in 2018, the first symposium in the World Congress, uh, the first remote sensing symposium in the World Congress, then, and afterwards, the first paper of the Brazilian and the first program of teaching and now the first service. Okay, so now I'm gonna make, make some uh, finally consideration regarding the technology and Brazilian experience. Let's talk about all this technology now. Uh, the near future on soil analysis, despite a lot of ideas that are coming on, I would say that the first is the hybrid laboratory, because as I told, it starts on the a laboratory. So the hybrid laboratory that started to show in this paper here, the definition is that wet soil analysis will work together with spectroscopy to reach the best quality, low cost, clean and quick analysis going from laboratory and you can go to field as well. Okay, so there is, and we saw in these papers and by experience that there exists larger variation between wet laboratories when they measure the same element because we know everything that happens. But sensors varies very lower, very lower difference between sensors. So we have to put these two together. More, the best model of spectroscopy was dependent when we got the best wet soil analysis. So it's the same thing, okay? Well, let's continue on the hybrid soil analysis. I'm gonna show a, a short film about this and then I, I will continue how I see. This is on practice, how you can construct an hybrid laboratory and this is only one 
idea. Okay. So as you see on this part, is also all the same that is already done, collect and ship. But when you receive and prepare the samples, you do not go to soil analysis. You go to spectral analysis. So it's a spectral sector inside the lab that will make all preparation for all this type, there are protocols that has to be used, and Dr. R. L. Bendar will see on this his speech. And now the samples go to spectroscopy and you have a lot of types of equipments and accessories. We only give you some examples. So here is one using the fiber. The fiber is uh, more difficult to use, well, not more difficult, but it does not optimize so much the work, but it depends on what you have in your hands. So you also have the contact probe. So we are giving only two examples, please. We have a lot of them in market, okay? And also have um, uh, other missions. This all can be more uh, prepared for laboratories to make it quicker, make it quick. Well, this was the first part, measuring the spectra. Okay, so now let's go to the next part. Phase two, let's continue, you're in the lab, phase two. So as I told you, you have all soil samples that your clients brought and you took the spectra from each one. Now look at this. Afterwards, you will have the leather sector, the chemometrics one. The chemometrics will select the main represented soil sample, but based on spectra, not soil analysis. And afterwards, the selected ones will go to traditional analysis, as everybody knows. So here, only some samples went, and who chose were from the spectra. Okay, so now what happens? These, uh, these samples, this on this side, what the, the clay content came from the wet soil analysis. But now it will go back inside and they have a respected spectra. Okay, so now we have the spectra from these samples and we have the, the element, how much each sample had from the wet soil analysis. So what we have now is a model and this model all the spectra that from the other samples will come inside the model and will spit out, and will come out the clay content of all the other soil analysis. This is how 
one idea on how to play it and will reach the farmer. Another sequence that I wanted to show is, and I call this, this would be the first part for you that are starting. You have to start to make the data. This is an, an advanced part. Imagine that you already have a lot of clients and all clients send it to you and now you have a lot of spectrum. So you have a laboratory database. Now it's, it's a bit different. Now you can use another strategy. The client comes to re reception and brings one soil sample. So now you send the soil sample to the spectra sector, take the spectra and the chemometrics will see your data set and we'll see all the groups that are similar and we'll try to see on, and, and he will try to see on which group this unknown spectra fits. And if it fits, you will use the model. You will not need to make the wet analysis. But if it will not fit, then you will have to use the soil analysis. And you start growing your data set and you give deliver for your client. Okay, now some things that are important that people do not see from spectra. Spectroscopy for wet laboratory, quality evaluation, a qualitative uh, view. This is an empirical thing that we just saw. I was looking at this spectra here. This is spectroscopy. But when I saw the, the, the clay content, it said to me that it was very clayey. So I put, the, I put two spectra of a clay and a sandy. And this was not, not similar for the clay, absolutely not. So what did I make? I got the soil sample, same soil sample, remade, remade on wet analysis and came the new result, it really was a sandy sample, so the spectra was right. Now, this could be was, was only looking at, but just now we are creating, and this is still not published, a systematic spectroscopy quality evaluation where using the spectra, he creates clusterings, and by the clusterings, he sees on each clusters, he sees which sample is with a spectra too, too much, uh, it's low, like an outlier. He's too, uh, too, uh, uh, too far from the, 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 from, the, um, uh, from the pattern that he should have. So this we are doing as a thing to make more fast. So you can run all your analysis and see, oh, this spectra is showing a soil analysis that is not correct. Let's remake it, but by spectra, okay? Now let's talk about money because everything, everything goes about money. Huh? So spectroscopy to see your costs. We got all the data of these laboratories that are were great contributors with us. And we got all this spectroscopy and look at what we made. We made for each laboratory a training and a testing model using spectra and the soil analysis. But we use some numbers for training and testing. And we were, we were increasing the testing and we were diminishing the training to see what happened. And look what happened on this graphic here. Here is the laboratories and here is the R2. And this is the size of the test. I'm gonna to try to explain on a few words. This lab laboratory, number eight, what we saw is that when he, you, he can save 13% money if he used 0.85 of his uh, accuracy, but he can save 50% of the money if he wants to use 95% uh, um, 
So the point is that uh, if he increase the uh, he, he he can increase the, the accuracy and and goes lower. Uh, sorry, but I think here is a different. He can save thirteen with a point ninety five. Yes, point ninety five. It's wrong here, and he can save fifteen with point eighty five. Of course. So he can save more money, but with less accuracy. And look at this, all these laboratories here, they are all under 0.75. So please make this correction here for, thank you. Uh, soil analysis and productivity. So what are we missing? This is another point that few people talk about. When you go and farmers go and to use for fertilizers and put fertilizers, I ask you, do you remember that on at what's happening inside the soil, it's not only the nutrients and the CC is based on the number of nutrients and the AL and H, but in fact, we have a mineral inside here and mineralogy is Mineralogy is the engine of water, pH, fertilizer, roots, adsorption, minerals, microorganisms, soil aggregation, temperature, soil truck. It's a lot. It's too much. So in practice, users are with missing concepts from production. So mineralogy was forgotten because it's a very difficult thing to do in the past. But now it, it, we can do a spectroscopy. Look at this graphic here in Brazil. For grains, uh, for soy, this is the production along the ears, okay? And this is the use of fertilizers along the ears. Why is, why is this happening? This is happening despite a lot of variables because we still need more information about what's happening in the roots and in our soils before putting all of this in practice and mineralogy can reach this. And finally, we come to the machine era. We are in the machine era. The machine era in its limitations. For one measurement, you can get a lot of information. And these measurements will go to the machine, the machine learning, and we will have a lot of elements, but we have to put in mind that these elements, main of them, most of them are reliable. For instance, now, some of them are mostly, and some of them are still on research. So we have to keep them in mind, but the machine learning is also population and models dependent, and some cases are we cannot explain because it's, it gets for in from inferences. So yes, we cannot see what's happening, everything what's happening, but the laboratories can see what's happening on the equations. That's why it's difficult them to see this. But this is the evolution. We are in this area and we have this challenge to go on with. So now I'm gonna show something more to go to practice to people on spectroscopy, okay? So spectroscopy can go also from the, from the laboratory to remote and to the field. So let's take a look on this short film, please. So this, these are the data set that we have for this near and near from Brazil. And we created this geo three system to have the bare soil image. So we can estimate also the bare uh, so, uh, analysis from bare soil, but this is field. But we can get a zoom from a farm, and this is not, this is physics. To get clay content, it's not statistics. It's a detection of information of spectra. And this, of course, is to help to optimize. And we, can, we need soil types on this task. 
and afterwards going to the managed zones and precision agriculture to use the important fertilizer and the variety to reach productivity. Okay, so what can be done? Users do not want to understand nor make modeling. We have to make a platform where the user choose the population and the system makes the modeling. Advanced level, allow to do its own processing. This is more for use for researchers. Spectral laboratories can be made for the world, continental or regional. The level chosen by the user's choice regarding accuracy, scale, and others. That's why it can be done. The type to use will be country structure dependent as well. And teaching courses at different levels from different countries is absolutely necessary to tell the advantages and limitations. And the advantages, we all said, quick, preparation, can bring mineralogy back and will increase popularization of soil analysis. The limitation, well, we can discuss some limitations as which elements are the best. And we have a lot of challenges yet. So about models and spectral laboratory libraries, but the importance is that we can transfer this to field as well. This is the next step and all this fight is all, also going at the same time. And finally, I would like, I'm at the end, I want to show a brief film as I was in this pandemic terrible uh, moment. I was in the, uh, my nephew uh, home and seeing she, uh, a girl having a lecture and online, and this is the film of what I saw on, on her lecture about soils, the new generation, what they want. Precisamos do solo para plantar. Não podemos jogar produtos químicos no solo. Aí aqui eu fiz o desenho. Aí eu escrevi: solo, cuide bem dele. Okay, that's it. And finally, I only will show a brief film of what we do in our team. Uh, and our team is closely dependent of a, a lot of persons around the world that help us a lot on Australia, on Israel, on Europe, on US. So we have help of a lot of people to make all of this. So I'm going to show what we all do to know soils from the basic to spectroscopy and to go to the farmer as a service to make food production. Only to say that field work for us is not only in one farm or two farms. We go uh, along a lot of places in Brazil to see all the variances that we have and keep testing models in all places, testing and retesting on different environments and different biomas.
The other thing that is important to state is this, this technology as pedometrics took pedology alive again. That's what, that's my, my, what I see. So students start with this, but then probably he can go and wants to know more, better about soil and go to pedology. So it's a way to bring young students back again to know soil. Okay, so that's it. I thank you everybody uh, for this opportunity for Fowler Glosland and all of this that is on screen and mostly for the young fellows that helped me to prepare all this presentation. Thank you all, thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Damati. I think you did very, very good presentation and uh, I saw many participants uh, uh, commented on the chat. They all say it's very informative presentation and they give a lot of uh, learned a lot from your experience. And uh, we also had uh, quite a lot of questions, and we select a few of them can answer alive. Maybe you can. Uh, I think there is. A, I think the from the QA box you also can say can see it by yourself, but I will read it out because the recordings will not show the QA box. So for the later on, if anybody wants to watch the video rec recording, so they will also know the questions. Uh, I think there the first question is saying, soil sampling is done by many laboratories and a person. Uh, wondering what the error due to sampling from multi-laboratory database and it addressed within the model or uh, yes I think it's mainly talking about the this is a random error from different laboratories or by the people yeah I understand that that it, people collect differently so it will be uh, when this this sample reaches the laboratory it will have to be written how it was collected because if it's randomly and mixed it's it this this can be something that uh, the, the the result will be for the for the random sample not the single one yeah i agree as well and um, there is another uh, question actually quite interesting i I was trying to answer and then I realized that actually is a quite a good question. Maybe you can help and then many other participants can, can understand better. Ask a question, what is the best or what is a recommended sampling approach for the spectroscopy analysis for carbon? Probably also can something more general also is talking about the, what is a recommended sampling approach for constructing a soil spectral library. Should it be sampling by depth or by the horizon? Okay. Well, this is a really good question. Yeah, this is a really good question, actually. <laughs> well, let's say like this. Let's say like this. We cannot make if you have if you are research and you have pits, it's better by horizon, but but not all the horizon. You can split inside the basic horizon. Okay. But the point is. Not everybody is going to open a pit. Everybody is going to collect using uh, using the, the, uh, other types of uh, systems. So uh, I, I would uh, say that yes, you have to collect 
by uh, horizon, by surface, collect on surface, um, but on different depths. And um, well, if we go directly to the question, the correct is an horizon. Yes. The problem will be the technique part, how to do that, because nobody's going to make all bits. Because when you're doing with, uh, with auger, you are mixing horizons that will mix the information. So carbon is very important. So I would say that has to be by horizons. Otherwise, you have to get, get only uh, samples on the first layer. Now, another thing is on practice, on practice for farmers, at least in Brazil, they do it 0 0.20 centimeters and use it because they don't have, it's, it will be too much money to keep collecting all 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 5, 10, 10, 20 to make it. So you have to differentiate scientific to practical reasons. Yeah. I think this question we can discuss it. weeks and weeks. <laughs> Yes, write many yes. books. Yes, that's yeah. it. And there is another question also. Uh, it's general, but it's also interesting to discuss is uh, what are the limitations of the soil spectroscopy compared to the wet chemistry analysis? Okay. This is the basic, there's the classic question. Look, um, point number one you will not lose nothing using spectroscopy. You will only gain. This has to be inside. You will only gain using spectroscopy because spectroscopy will bring a lot of, of, of advantages, like to see, such as to see the quality, to see spectra, to see mineralogy, to increase information on your soil. Lines. This is the first thing. Second, carbon will be carbon credit for the world. Everybody needs carbon. In Brazil, carbon will not, be, they cannot use more and more residues. So it's another thing. So when you say, what's the limitations? I can tell you some limitations, but you have much more advantages. Okay, so what are the limitations? The limitations are one, the chemical ones like, calcium, magnesium, phosphorus, and nitrogen, the chemical elements are not directly detected by it. So you are model dependent by the machine learning systems that people are creating, chemometrics. So for instance, now, today, it's a limitation, but chemometrics in machine learning will evolve. Um, so what, what are the limitations? Uh, I can, uh, I only see much more advantages, much more advantages than limitations. I can say that I see more limitations on the wet soil analysis when you have, where you have to use a lot of types of chemistry elements that comes from different uh, companies and you will use different equipments and you have a lot of stages, and that's why we have difference between laboratories. So think about that. So it's the opposite. Uh, that's what I see. You don't, you, you, you're focusing, it, it's a wrong focus when you say, what's the limitations related with the, the wet? It's the contrary. It's what the limitations of wet regarding spectroscopy. <laughs> <laughs> and and point spectroscopy is not magic and it will not do everything today if you start you will do clay sand silt organic matter and cc and if you want mineralogy you will gain and you will also gain regarding the qualitative part that i said you will gain after we'll gain too and wait a while about the nutrients and continue using the nutrients, for instance. 
Um, I saw a few questions uh, in the chat. Some colleagues uh, wrote some questions in the chat. And this question is also particularly interesting. I mean, I can answer it, but I think it's also too important to listen your opinion, not just this question. This question is about, the, is there a regulation for soil spectroscopy? In my mind, there is not a regulation, but I think it's interesting to discuss a little bit do we need such a thing actually? <laughs> yes, a very good, very good question because just now, and Dr. Ayo Bendar will say that, there is a group working in the world for one, create protocols and rules to make spectroscopy. Two, to get an ISO reference for user for the spectroscopy for soils. So, uh, so the sensor will have to you have this ISO for soil analysis, and this is ongoing and probably will end on next year. So these things that you're asking for are already being prepared. So the idea is that at the end you will have all the protocols and like you have to think how a wet laboratory. It you will have the method the rules, an ISO, the regulator, regulations, all said, and the types of sensors that you have to use and all this stuff. Thank you. Uh, there is another question is also uh, quite interesting just to post it. I think I remember this question was asked in the uh, in chat. He said, how may, because this question is, it's also often asked, I think asked a couple of times in the previous session of the webinar, asked that, uh, how many samples is necessary to build an acceptable soil spectroscopy model? Will the model built for one country ex uh, applicable to other countries like a Brazilian model for tropical countries like for Philippines? Okay. I need a little time to respond to that because I know how to respond. The point you have to think is spectral libraries is you can as you can we will have a world spectral library. Okay, we will have it, and we will already have the Brazilian. So if you have a sample in Philippines and want to use my model, you can use it, and you will see the the error. If you can you want to use the, the, the world, you can use it and you can see the error. But at the end, at the end, these services will be chosen by the user. So the idea is that when we have all this prepared, the user can choose the samples that are around his area and the samples that are around his area in the data set will use this model for you because the best models are local models. So if you send samples from Philippines to use the Brazilian, well, what you and we are seeing that on some cases got good and some cases not. So I'm not sure about it, but if you have your local model, I'll be sure that you will have greater, get greater results. Now, I have to make this point for the wet laboratory guys. If you have a wet laboratory, as I'm telling you in Brazil, start like this. You have the wet, prepare your spectral sensor, and all clients that come start to make the spectra and the soil analysis and know from he, where he is. So when he comes back with a new soil sample, he or, you already have the spectra location from his farm, you know? So that's it. You have to think slow and then go greater. That's why the Brazilian laboratories are one to start because they, they will have the control. This client comes with 10 samples, but it's not good for him yet. Then 10 more, 
So when I have a number of samples that it's good for him, every time he comes, I use spectra. So the, 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 you, the user, will be able to use according to the accuracy that you want. For example, if you are in the country that does not have no laboratory analysis, well, use the Brazilian model that was online. It will be something because we will send you a, a, an accuracy. Use the world one that is coming, coming, coming in. So it, it, this is also dependent of the structure of the country and the structure of the farmer, if he had the money that he has to make it or not. So it's all user choice. I hope I could give some ideas. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, well, the, the participants actually now are quite active and uh, many questions coming. One, one question, actually, I also would like to answer a little bit on behalf of the Glossolum point of view. And also, uh, Professor Damad, also, uh, you are welcome to respond a little bit because this is also specifically asked for the Brazilian library. There is a one colleague from China, asked from Beijing, China, asked, can we get the data of the Brazilian Social Spectral Library or other spectral library to build a world model? So first of all, I would like to respond a little bit to this colleague and also other colleague is, uh, uh, there are quite many free open data resources, uh, spectral library in this world, such as a uh, Lucas data, which is a European soil spectral library. It's free available for everyone to download and uh, free of the using. And uh, currently Glossolon is working with different, our different partners. And we are trying to uh, build a, a global uh, with ex existing data and also trying to invite different partners to share some of the information to build a better and bigger spectral library, global spectral library. And we aim to provide a free online estimation service as well. That's our objective, but that will be a long journey to go. That's a, and also in the meantime, Glossolon is aim, aims to connect the laboratories around the world to strengthen the communication between the laboratories. So the answer is yes, we can try to uh, encourage and convince the laboratories to share some data, but it's not something we can do it just tomorrow. But if you are any of you are interested, please write email to me and I can try to help. And then I give the floor to the professor to talk about the Brazilian data. <laughs> Yeah, the Brazilian data was created at first by trust, as I said. It could not be disclosed. They did not want it yet because they were working on that. They were making things on that. But we created a system now that is online. You can see all the persons that participated. And you can see, see the, their emails. You can contact directly with him. You can present yourself and you can ask for the data. And, and probably, and you know, this is good because you will get in contact with persons because most of them are scientists and you can make works together or they can only share with you. Yes, this is, this is the idea of the Brazilian to encourage, to create new. If we only disclose it, People go, get it, and that's it. But if we force them to go with the researchers, they will create more interrelationships all around the world. So this is the idea. You can get it, but you have to contact them. But we will, we will, this is the next step. It will be shared, all of it opened, uh, after everybody has a time to use the online platform. Otherwise, the online platform uh, uh, loses its, 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 its idea, okay? But it will be. 
Yeah, thank you. And uh, another thing I would like to address is that I, I, first of all, I apologize. Uh, uh, in the beginning of this uh, webinar, I forgot to introduce our another two panelists uh, to help you with the questions. And uh, yeah. Nenida and uh, uh, sorry, uh, Rao, uh, could you please turn on your camera so our <laughs> colleagues also can see both of you? And thank you very much for all this one and a half an hour uh, helping with the questions. I think we have uh, more than 50 questions, more than I think probably even 60 questions, just uh, plus some questions uh, from the chat. And then we, we really appreciate your help and uh, support. And some of the participants also asked if there will be a certi certificate provided. Yes, definitely. Well, close along webinar and FL webinar, we normally provide the certificate for upon attendance. Uh, it's just that we have a large amount of participants joining the webinar. And every time we have a few hundred participants that, and uh, we have a different webinars. So our team, our colleagues are working uh, for this matter uh, very, very hard. Uh, that will take some time to send you the certificate by the email, but uh, sure, you will receive the certificate by the email. Uh, I think in, uh, we are in the end. Uh, this brings us to the end of the, this session. Uh, you will still hear from us and uh, receive shortly an email with a link to the recording and the presentations. Uh, the previous uh, three webinars already online. So you are very welcome to watch online. And this one will be, the recording will be online, presentation will be online as well, shortly in a week, maximum two weeks, I think. Uh, you will receive the email as well. A very big thank you to our today presenter, the Professor Demate and the hundreds of the participants. I think we reached the approximately 400 participants, I guess, as I remember, joined our webinar. And uh, we, I will now to uh, I will now populate the send the link to the our chat box, so you will be able to register our coming webinars uh, to continue listen our experience and the the knowledge from our experts. Uh, Remember to check this webpage regularly as another series of webinar on wet chemistry, health and safety, equipment purchasing, quality assurance, and many other topics related to the soil laboratory work will be organized in next few months. So all the participants, uh, thank you very much for, you, for joining this webinar. And also thank you very much, Professor Demate, and also our panelists, uh, the uh, two experts from the team of the professor from Brazil. And thank you very much for your contribution. We really learned a lot and uh, see you next time. Okay, thank you all. Thank you, Nelida and Raul for the support. Thank you, Yi and Isabelle and Paul. Thank you. Thank you. It was uh, very good, many questions. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It was a. <laughs> it was very. It was a lot of work to prepare this presentation because it was it was not prepared. It was a uh, not only get some papers and show them. Uh, so all presentations that we make are new, are different. So I hope you liked it. Okay. Yeah, it was uh, very very good. Okay. So that's yeah. it, Isabelle. Thank you then too. Raul, Nelly, obrigado, viu? Por você, para vocês, pela ajuda. Okay, yeah, so okay. Thank you. If you need anything, please get in contact. Okay. Sure, I will uh, write to you uh, shortly once the video everything is online, and uh, I will let you know, and then we can talk something further collaboration. Okay, that's it. Bye. Yeah. Thank you. Bye.